really smart my kids and welcome to my channel for those of you who've been here before welcome back uh, a platform where i turn struggling math students into maths masters um, i post videos tuesdays and thursdays so please subscribe and turn on the bell to make sure you get notified when i do post any videos um, so in this video i'm going to be teaching you about break even you know what it is and the various calculations to actually find this point yeah so let's Let's get started. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be looking at break even analysis. Okay, so I'm going to start off by just making sure that you guys understand what break even analysis actually is. So when, um, so the official definition I have here is the break-even point is where a company's income equals their expenses. So, if you think of a company and you think of their income, where would you say their income would come from? Their income would come from the things that they are selling, okay? So, when, when a company, and, and then obviously the expenses would be, you know, what money goes out, you know, what money do they have to pay in order to keep the, the business sustainable, so when the money that goes out is equal to the money that comes in at that specific point, right, is where the company breaks even, right? So essentially, um, you know, a company only starts making profit beyond that point, right? So at that point, companies want to know, what is the amount of items that's actually sold um, in order to break even? In other words, how, let's say I'm at a company that sells ice creams, right? How many ice creams do they have to sell to make sure that they've covered their costs, right? And then once their costs are covered, only for every ice cream, only after that point, do they actually make a profit? Now, that's just the concept that you must understand with us. And... But, but I want you to see that this concept can be shared to you in various ways. Okay, it can be shared to you um, via table. They can give it to you in, via equation as well as a graph. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to show you how each of these are actually done. And so that you can see that in an exam situation, a break-even question will always encompass one of these forms. And often they'll ask you maybe something from a table form, and then you have to give it in, um, the answer um, uh, from the graph, or you have to draw the graph from the table, or you have to find the equation from... The, all of these are actually interlinked. So what I want to first show you in this video is really just how the same information, the same concept of break-even, is expressed in a table, is expressed in an equation, and is expressed in a graph, okay? So that you are able to actually move across them easily. Okay, so let's first look at the scenario that I'm going to use to show you this, and then we'll look at each of those um, ways of, do or the, the formats of this um, question. So the first one says, David makes and sells t-shirts, right? The details of his business are given below. He sells one t-shirt for 350 rand. So already my brain says, okay, this is the income I'm going to get when I sell one t-shirt, right? So anything that has to do with income will then be referred, well, we will be looking at that 350. Fine. His fixed cost is 1,200 rand per month. Now, fixed costs just means that what does he have to pay regardless of what's happening in the company, okay? So, if he is paying rent um, for a little room to make these t-shirts, then that means that regardless of whether he's making the t-shirts or not, that rent is still due. And that rent has got nothing to do with how much, uh, that's got nothing to do with the actual product. Right, so that would mean that his fixed cost would be 1200. So that remains constant regardless of how much he sells or how much he makes. 
Then the second thing is his cost per t-shirt is 110 rand for each t-shirt. Okay, so that means to actually make the t-shirt, it's 110 rand for every t-shirt. Okay, so this we will see as his variable cost. Because this cost depends on and vary, varies based on how many he actually makes. Okay, so again I'm going to bring you back to my initial definition where break-even point is where I take my income and I find at which point is it equal to my expenses, right? So all the things in the information that's given that's got to do with my income is the 350, right? And then for my expenses, it's my 1,200 which is fixed and then for every t-shirt I make, it's 110 rand. So that's my scenario, that's the information, okay? Now, let's look at how would this be dealt with if we used the formula system, okay? So, the formula system says we have to get a formula that shows our income, we have to get our formula that shows our expenses, we make these equal to each other, and that answer will tell us where we will break even. So, let me show you what I mean. My expenses is my 1,200 Rand, which is a fixed cost, right? Plus my 110 Rand for every t-shirt, okay? So that will be the formula that we would use for expenses. Now you will see that many times in exams, they give you the formula or they ask you to create the formula, okay? So the E stands for the expenses and my fixed cost will always come first, plus and then my variable cost will always be attached to a letter. And that letter is um, um, that letter represents whatever it is that my company is making. Okay, now if I look at my income, my income is then 350T, which means for every t-shirt I sell, I will get 350 Rand. Now take note, those of you, I know you not all are like come from pure maths, but when there's a letter next to a value, this actually means multiplication. Okay, so both of this actually means 350 times t, and this is 110 times t. Right, now, to find our break-even point, we are going to make these equations equal to each other. So I've got the expense equation equal to the income equation. And what we need to do now is we need to calculate t, and this is where you're going to have to know a little bit of maths. But don't worry, it's not hectic. So just follow my steps and it will be easy for you to see. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to move this part over so that everything that has T's to it, right, is on the one side of the equal to sign. And everything else is on the other. However, the math rule says if I take this over, then I'm going to do the opposite operation. So I'm going to say 1200 equals to the 350T and because this was plus, I move it over minus. Now, I simplify this. So, 350t minus 110t equals 240t. Okay, take note there. I just simplified this section to get that answer. Now, I need to get this t alone, which means I need to take this 240 over. Now, what I mentioned to you is whenever you take something over, the opposite must occur. So, if this is 240 times t, if I want to take the 240 over, I'm going to divide by the 240, okay? So I'm dividing, essentially I'm dividing both sides by 40, right? But I'm putting this over and then this then becomes, cancels out and I end up having that T equals 5. Now what does this mean? This. What does this mean? Five t-shirts needs, at the point where we sold five t-shirts, that is where our income will equal our expenses. So we will only start making a profit from when we sell t-shirt 6. Okay? So if we look here, if we take this 5 t-shirts now and I put it in the expense formula. So let's say I say, it says 1,200 plus 110 now times the 5 t-shirts that I've sold, uh, made. Okay, remember this 110 is, um, is how much each t-shirt is made. That answer will give me 1,750. If I take the same answer here and put it in the income, 
right? 350 times the 5, I also get 175. Oh, 1750. Okay, so notice my break even point is where my income equals my expenses, right? And this calculation told us how many t-shirts we actually have to sell in order for our company to break even. Okay, I hope it's starting to sort of settle in now how the, what this actually means and how this actually works. Now, let's say we are given a table, okay? Same scenario, same situation, because we don't know how they give this to us in the exams, okay? So we make sure we understand all the possible ways of the matter, how they ask this question. We understand what is happening, but we also understand how to work within each format. Now, let's look at the table. Now, usually in an exam, the table is given, so I wouldn't panic about understanding where, how to design or set up the table. However, I want you to make sure that you understand the table. So on the top here, one, two, three, four, five, six, this represents whatever it is we are making, right? And in any test in exam, this will always represent whatever is being made. Excuse me, made or sold. So let's look at our income, okay? So I'm going to fill this out and I want to show you what this actually means. So my income, if I sell one t-shirt, is 350 because one t-shirt costs 350 right if i had two that would cost 700 right and three i would get an income of 1050 if i sold four i would get 1400 rand as income if i sold five i would get 1750 as income and if i sold six i would get 2100 as income Okay, so this all represents my income for each amount of t-shirts that I sell. Okay, so if I link this back to this situation, essentially in this formula, we would have said 350 times 1 for one t-shirt and it would have given us this answer. 350 times 2 and it gives us this answer. So I'm trying to just show you how these actually interlink. But for now, let's just quickly move away from the formula and let's just focus on the table quickly. So if I look at this now, so you see, I've got all my different values there for my income. Now let's look at our expenses. Now again, we know that our expenses is 1,200 plus the 110. But if we only make one t-shirt, then we will be charged the 1,200 Rand because that's fixed plus the cost of one t-shirt which is 1,310. So that goes in in our expense section here. I do the same for two t-shirts. So this still is the fixed cost and this is now two times because I made two of them which means I have the expense it cost me to make those two. And then the total for that is then the 1,420. And that goes into the second part. Okay? Now, the third one and all the others work the same. Okay? I'm just substituting it and finding out, you know, what is my expense for each of this. So if you notice, for two t-shirts, the expense to my company is that amount. For three t-shirts, the expense to my company is that amount. So if they ask you to calculate or to find out what the break-even point is, but they're, using the, the, they're giving the information in table format, all you need to do is check where is the income the same as the expense. So again, in this case, look there. This is where the income and the expense is the same, and this is at five t-shirts. Okay, so do you see how same information, just different formats? Okay, so depending on how they ask this question, you know, you will, you, you'll be able to then answer, based with your understanding from each of these, you'll be able to answer any of them. Okay, so the last format we need to look at is actually looking at graphs. Okay, now most of the time the graphs are taken from the table. So I've just moved this table from the previous example to this one so that you can actually see how this is done. 
Now, you must note that when you're doing the graphs now, there's going to be one graph that represents your income. There's going to be another graph that represents your expenses. And at the point where these two graphs touch each other, that will then be your break-even point. So if I look at the graph at this case now, what I've drawn is, I've said, okay, the amount of money on the left and the amount of t-shirts at the bottom. Please note, whatever it is that you are making will always be in your denominator. Just like whatever you are making, the total there will be at the top of the table. So it would be easy for you to note that whatever they have at the top of the table is what will then be in your denominator, just in case they ask you to actually plot the graph, okay? Then on the left-hand side is the amount of money. So I've got the orange, which says income, and I've got a lighter orange that says expenditure. So let's just look at our income because this is the first one we have in our table. So our income is at one, our income is 350. Okay, technically this should actually start at naught because at naught, the income is naught. Okay, so, um, and at naught year, where's the income here? The, uh, the expense. The expense at zero is actually um, our fixed cost, which is the 1,200. So this would actually extend to 1,200. Please note that these all have to start at this point here. Eh? So don't start it like it is starting here. Always start it at the top so that you actually know the scenario for zero. Okay. So if we look at our income, right, do you see that we've got one, it's 350, two, it's 700, three, it's 1050. All of this is corresponding to our income here. So which makes sense because the more we sell, the more money we make. So the graph will go up and make more and more money. If we look at the expenditures you see here, this is actually the graph here. And this graph would start at 1,200. So again, we have our expenditures um, moving across this way. And at the point where these graphs meet, that is our break-even point. Which again, if you want to know how much t-shirts, it's five t-shirts. And what is the total that the company would make at break-even point? The income and the expenditure will equal to 1,750. And that is how you work around break-even point. Okay, so again, the, there's different ways that they can ask this. You get the gist of what I've just explained now. You literally can use that understanding to answer any of the questions. Okay, and again, I would suggest to you, do this example, with, go back to the video and look at where the question is just being asked. And you see if you can calculate um, using the formula, using the table, using the graph, if you actually get to the same answers that I get here. Okay, because it's important that you note that yes, you can understand it now. But it's only through practice and writing it down and actually doing the calculations yourself that you will actually remember what I'm teaching you. Okay, so please make sure that you actually do that. All right, so yeah, I hope this helped. And yeah, if, if you need any more clarity or if there's anything else you need, pop it in the comment section. Okay, thank you. Okay, so how was that? I hope it, this video helped you and that it gave you sort of like a real holistic um, understanding of the break-even point. Okay, so um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, like I said, add it in the comment section. If there's anything you'd like me to um, explain or any other videos that you'd like me to make, let me know. And I will be happy to do that. All right. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Bye-bye.